Hey, what's up, friends? This is Act One of today's audio podcast for July 10th. Hope you enjoy it. I now publish two acts per day. So the second half of the podcast is right after this one, Act Two. Make sure you check that out as well. Enjoy. Thanks for listening. Welcome into the Eric Saint Show podcast, a daily show where I discuss I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures. Uh, thank you so much once again. I make sure I get in, uh, plenty of uh, uh, camera time for um, the stars of the show, the dogs. Uh, looks like Darla. Exceptionally calm. That's good. Bruce, also chilling. O'Neal off to my side. You can't see him, but he's uh, just looking at me. Welcome. Uh, Maureen says, easy, nice shirt. For the audio audience, I'm wearing a shirt. It says, fresh sarcasm served daily. I really, really went hard in upgrading my wardrobe. When we went camping, we, um, realized that the place that we went to camp, it's a, you know, RV park. They didn't have shit there. It's pretty new. And I, I, the guy who owns the place, he comes walking up and, uh, I go, I go, Hey, nice, nice park here. And he's really like into it. He's into, he's really, uh, into like giving you the long story. And all you had to, all I had to say was, Hey, this is a nice park. Well, let me tell you. I had, I had the needs in mind of people like yourself when I built this park a handful of years ago, Eric. And I go, oh, okay, cool. I thought to myself, what would I want if I was, if I was at an RV park? Now, what he should have then said was, and then I did none of those things. Because quite literally... All this place had was like, I mean, you, you hook up, you put your power, you put all the shit you're supposed to have power, water, the, the, the hose with the, with, from the shitter going into the ground. Not like it worked with my stupid toilet, but I'm like, no, there's some big things you don't have here. Like typically, um, people don't necessarily like to crap in the actual camper. Like if there's a bath bathroom on site, most people prefer that because one less thing to put into your camper. Do they have that? No, they got an outhouse. So Justin and I are using the outhouse while the women are clogging the toilet. Um, shower house. Sh- nope. Can't take a shower there. You got to use. Now I, you, you, we have a shower in the thing. Of course, mine leaks because my RV fucking sucks. First world problems. But, um, no, no, no place to take a shower. A lot of people like that at an RV park. Now, what I was counting on is uh, the next thing that I'm not telling you about is, um, 100% essential. In fact, I was packing the clothes up for the trip. And I'm like, all right, uh, I got, uh, I'm going to pack about four days worth of clothes because as it is at every RV park in America, you do your laundry while you're there. This is called glamping. God damn it. No, we don't have a washer dryer. What the fuck, man? So, I have no clothes. All right. Nick writes, I only use my camper bathroom. I don't want trench foot from the public bathrooms. Yeah, I don't know what trench foot is, but it sounds funny. Either way, um, they don't have a washer dryer. So we have to travel 22 miles to the nearest town to the Walmart 
And uh, they had a, a bunch of graphic tees for eight ninety nine. And uh, I got one that says like University of Maine. And I got one that says fresh sarcasm served daily. And I got one that says Chris Stapleton because I like him. These are the types of t-shirts where you put them in the dryer once and um, they, they wouldn't fit a three-month-old child. So this is probably the only time I am going to wear this shirt. So I really upgraded my wardrobe with the three or four t-shirts I got, a new hoodie, and uh, some new sweatpants. As you know, sweatpants are a regular uh, thing. And I, and I got some socks and some underwear. Now that's all the clothes I will buy for the year. I don't ever buy clothing. And if I do, I'm annoyed as fuck. Uh, update on that camper. A couple days ago, I told you about how when I got back, while we were on our trip, this is brand new, this thing. It's a 2024. All right. And it's an upgrade from the class C that we had. It's a class A. And I'm like, fuck yeah. It's like driving a bus, okay? And uh, upon starting to use this thing, everything has broken on it. It's so bad. Um, when it rains, water pours through the AC unit on the, on the roof that you know, pumps in the cold air from the ceiling. And it, it's raining inside of the camper. Okay. And then the water is like rolling around in the ceiling and getting in the light fixtures and destroying them. The generator's fucked up. I got it repaired once. I told you about that. I used it once and then it stalled when I was in Grayling and it wouldn't start up again. I take it to the Cummings place where they fix something. He goes, yep. Oh, the pump was bad. And, uh, holy shit, uh, it, uh, you need a new carburetor. Megan says, what the hell did you buy? Bruce does pre-purchase RV inspections. Well, live and learn. I mean, I didn't think I needed one for one that has, you know, one mile on it. So what a pile of shit. Take a shower and um there's there's water rolling out of the um out of the shower into like literally running down the center of the RV. The toilet doesn't work. Every time that someone takes a dump in it, it gets clogged. You there's a thing called a leveling system. You push a button and these jacks come down and it levels it. That's fucking busted. And then, so I get there the other day on Monday, I haven't talked about this yet. And I go, and I'm going over the, all the problems with the dude and he's real nice and I'm keeping it above board. I'm not being a snarky asshole like I am right now. And, um, he goes, what's up with the leveling system? I go, well, you turn it on and it says, take it in for service. And he goes, Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, this is an easy fix. I'll fix it right now. I go, oh, okay, cool. He sits in there and uh, he turns the thing on. It's like this keypad, right? Where like you, you drive, you're supposed to show up where you want to camp. Everybody has to sit still and you just hit the goddamn button and the things come down. <laughs> I did that once, lifted the jacks, left my campsite, go to use it again. Doesn't work. Dude sits down. He goes, oh, yeah, this is easy fix. Easy. He goes, you got to reset it. You got to push these four buttons for 10 seconds and it'll reset. So he does that and it does not. And I'm just looking at him. And he goes, oh, hang on. And he goes, you got to push enter and then you got to hit left, left. Right, right, up, down, up, down, A, B, A, B. And boom, you play Contra 
and it's fixed okay cool and he goes look it reset i go oh yeah it did he goes all right now watch i'm gonna hit level auto level and it, it's it's perfect he hits it it does nothing and he goes uh yeah uh, we got to take a look at it. i go yeah i know i know i know i i know you do um david says what a pile of shit yeah yeah i know uh dj says have them use more water if the hose goes into the ground to prevent poop tissue pile oh i got i can look trust me that is not the problem this unit this rv has uh what's known as a macerator we call it the poop chewer in that black water holding tank where all the poop and pee goes you hit a button and you hear it's the equivalent of a goddamn vitamix and it's it is grinding it up it's turning it all into into porridge shit porridge you could open up the dump tank uh, dump tank and make shit pancakes after this thing that's not the problem the turds are not getting to the actual tank they're getting stuck in the in the fucking mario brothers pipes So I explained this to dude. I go, look, man, this is the problem. And uh, he goes, all right, well, I go, I don't know if you got to re it or what, but this is a horrible design. And every single time I have to plunge it. And I said, I go, you know how many times I had to plunge my last camper? Zero. Zilch. None. I've never had to do that. I don't know what it is, but on the old one, it just went down through the P-trap and then it's gone. On this one, I don't know what you, you're doing. Did you make like fucking hamster tubes in there? It's been one thing after another. So um, there was even a moment where Diana, uh, she opened up a drawer in the back part where we sleep to put her clothes in and she puts her clothes in and then um we camp and then she opens the drawer to clean out the rv and get all of her clothes out that she didn't wear and to take them inside and the bottom of the drawer is fucking destroyed it's busted out it's made remember when you were a kid you had one of those um uh airplanes and you like uh, spin the propeller and then the rubber band attaches to the back and it's made out of a uh, uh, balsa wood. That's what this hunk of shit is made out of. Balsa wood. Oh. So I have a whole list of things to break down with this dude and he's being real nice and I'm being real nice. By the way, let me back up. When this was all going down, when one thing after another, every day I wake up with another catastrophe with this pile of shit. Um, I call the dealership. And uh, amazingly, I wasn't even remotely annoyed. I just kept it together. And I said, so, all right, this is what's up. Actually, I take it back. The guy who sold me the thing, I sent him a text. Um explaining what the problem was well i guess he took that and screenshot it and sent it off to the dealership okay a few minutes later uh i'm on the phone with number two at the dealership and i go hey i'm looking for number one is number one there and he goes uh i'm number two number one is in a meeting i go oh okay he goes yeah he's in a meeting about you i go he is he goes yeah everybody is aware of what's happening to you and there is a there is discussions right now about what's going on. And I and I, I was like impressed with that. I was like, okay. All right, so we chatted it up and I stayed remarkably calm. And he goes, Look, I gotta tell you, you're handling this amazingly, because most people would not. We deal with people all the time who have 
whenever they have a bad time or something negative happens in their camping experience because of a problem with the RV, they're not so patient. And uh, I'm like, oh, all right. So then I'm like, this is going to help me. All right. So then I get on the phone with number one. I go, look, man, it's just been a catastrophe. I'm afraid that when I come back from a hiking trip, it's a uh, hike. It, I come, it's going to be burning. You know, uh, I'm afraid to leave the dog in here because I'm afraid the AC will break down and then the dog will die from a heat stroke. And that was a legitimate concern. We didn't take the dog. We took the dog everywhere with us. And that was one of the reasons why I don't trust this thing. And he was also, uh, very, very cool. And I go, I want to, I want my money back. I go, I want, I want you to take this back and I want you to give my money, give me my money back. He goes, I know I can appreciate that. He goes, it's very, very difficult to do though. There's a lot. Of, and I go, well, I mean, and he goes, look, can you please let me try to get you to fall in love with this thing again? And I go, yeah, all right. I'll let you try that. Now, I don't know what the next step is if this fails. But for right now, this is where we're at. Go ahead, fix it, and let's see where, what we can come up with. By the way, thank you for the reminder, Tophus, about my dad. Dear Meathead happens in 35 minutes. I don't have anything lined up. I haven't, I haven't like talked about it in any way. So I definitely need some, uh, some questions for dad. If not, I'll be just chatting his ass up, but that's totally cool too. Uh, Megan says the water damage alone is a huge concern. Call Bruce. Oh yeah, I'm with you. That's, that sounds like it's something that has to happen. Stevie says, have you called a lawyer just in case? Not yet. I really hope, I really hope that I don't have to have that happen. You know? So I went through the thing and um, the guy, we went over everything on the list. Over everything on the list. The list itself has about 15 things on it. Again, I just got this thing in January. I used it for the first time in May. It's been, I've had to drive it to the shop more than once. I drove it once to get the goddamn generator repaired. And that was another thing that went. We're driving back after a, uh, a week of uh, trying to have a good time while all of this nonsense is happening, which shouldn't have happened. And our last stop is a Walmart parking lot in Erie, PA. I turn on the generator. I've been driving all goddamn day. I, I now want to go to sleep. Generator's running. You can hear it humming. It's good white noise. The AC is blowing in, so it's going to be Arctic cold in there. And all of a sudden, I hear it go. I'm like, what? What? What is this? I go to start up. you got to be kidding me. Nick writes, more patient than me. That fucker would be hanging out of the showroom windows by now. All right. In fact, the list of things on this, this is because I actually have a, a list. Oh, forgot this part. You hit a button and the... Um, there's a thing called a slide out, which makes it wider, increases your living space. You've seen those a million times. Well, it's run by a motor on both sides. And occasionally they get out of timing where the one side isn't talking to the other side. And when that happens, that's a problem. You could be stuck out in the field with a side that won't open or a side that won't close. You never want this to happen. Mine's starting to puke. I go to bring it in where I'm in Erie PA in a Walmart parking lot. I go to bring the side in after we've been sleeping and the one side starts to go in and the other one does not like it's on either end, a motor on either end of the whole thing, the length of the coach. 
the one side starts to go in, the other side does not, and then it stops. <laughs> what the fuck? Put it out again. Goes all the way out. Try it again. It wants to stop, but it doesn't. It comes all the way in. One side gets in first. The other one follows it. So it's fucked. I tell my man there over at the dealership, and he takes a look at it. He looks at something. Goes, oh yeah, yep. Yeah. It's it's he can see various types of wear and tear on it. He goes, yeah, this, this is a problem. This is definitely a problem. So slide out fucked. Generator fucked. Uh, part of the paint is coming off. They have to repaint a portion of the goddamn thing. There's a uh, in the dash. There is like the uh, monitor that has like cameras on it so you can see behind you into the sides and it's also your GPS, all that shit. If I turn on the four ways of hazards, the screen goes out and starts flashing and lines go through it. And I'm like, what the fuck? I, I ride with the flashers on all the time. I can't have my goddamn cameras out. I can't see anything. Because if you change lanes, you want to look at that camera, make sure there's nobody there. Tyler says, EZ's got an Arya Stark list. He mutters before falling asleep every night. Generator, shit grinder, chipped paint. Uh, molding falling off above the stove. Molding on the outside of the vehicle. Roof AC leak. Light damage by leak. Toilet leveling system. Carpet in front falling off. Busted bedroom door. Um... There's a ladder to get into this top bunk with these hooks on it. And it's supposed to hook onto these openings on the actual bunk. The hooks are not as wide as the goddamn where they go. So it, it can't, it can't like grab on. It's a hazard. Uh, you open up a cabinet door and they have glass inlets on them. I opened up two, two times. I opened up different cabinets and the glass falls out. Shower leaks, damage from the uh, water leaking from the shower. Uh, also on that generator, the exhaust pipe, the hangers that have the exhaust pipe hanging onto the frame of the vehicle, two of the three fell off. I had to strut into the Walmart to fucking get shit to do my own homemade easy rhyme RV hanger setup. Every Walmart we stopped at, hey, I'm gonna go in and get some tools so I can fix the fucking RV. This piece of shit. God damn. Aram says, incredible that all the possible defects are combined in one. Look what you wrote. If I read it just as it's written, this is what he wrote. Incredible that all of the possible defects are combined in, on, spec, if, TV, off the line. That's a, that's a, you, you've become the new Kenny. Kenny says, I wonder if anyone in that meeting that they were having suggested perhaps Eric was sabotaging all this shit and causing it himself because he wanted them to take it back. Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. That's, that's another Kenny conspiracy. Just like you thought that that lady blew up the chick's house. Nick writes, did you order this RV off Timu or Alibaba? I bet you want to see it, don't you? All right, I'm going to show you this thing. When you see it from the outside, you're going to be like, how can something that looks so good be such a pile of shit? I wasn't kidding when I said it's a bus. 
That's what it looks like. A lot of jokes about this was made by Boeing. Megan, I think my old Walmart tent is more waterproof than your brand new RV. So true. So true. So when you see one of these for sale, avoid it. Okay? Avoid that shit. Tofus says, that's your new RV? Yeah. It's fucking garbage. He says, that's a Van Hool. I don't know what that is. Um, what the fuck was I going to say? I just got distracted. Thor is the name brand. Thor! The best, the good thing that works uh, is, is the motor. The motor and the uh, drivetrain were fantastic on the Thor Luminate. All right. Corey says, me and my wife have been discussing getting a camper someday, but one you pull with your truck. Seems like less of the hassle. Well, I don't know. There's something to be said, and I had a great experience with the uh, previous RV we had. Uh, not so much with this one. So far. But... There's something spectacular about being at the wheel of that thing and everybody's just fucking walking around, having drinks, watching TV. It, uh, when I get hungry, honey, can you go make me a sandwich? She gets up, makes me a sandwich. Can I get a cup of coffee? She goes, makes me a cup of coffee. Uh, Tofus says RVs pretty much use the same powertrain, Cummins diesel, and an Allison transmission. Well, this one worked great. But however, this one is not a diesel, it's gas power. Nick says, truck with a fifth wheel is the best setup. Unhook in three minutes and have a normal vehicle to drive around still. Yeah, some people like that too. Dofus says, gas? Wow, really? Yeah, um, it has this motor called the Godzilla. If you were to look up the Ford Godzilla motor, it's an absolute beast. It's like 450 cubic inches or something like that. And it turns like 425 horsepower. It's an absolute monster. And when I'm going up the mountains, it's kicking ass. And then it has like a second motor or something in the transmission that cools it down. None of the gauges even move. It just fucking rockets up the hill. Uh, Corey says, I've seen people with huge RVs like this, and then they're also pulling their normal car behind it. That seems wicked expensive. Well, that's what we do. Um, but you got to understand. Uh, it's all based on comfort level. And I don't, no one in my family wants to be just cooped up in a goddamn truck for, you know, two straight days of driving. If I'm going to drive across the country, for fuck's sake. Who the fuck wants to just sit in a goddamn car? All right? It's horrible. Do it this way. Don't do what Nick says. Nick's full of shit. All right. That's enough of that. Anyway, I took it to the guy. He says, okay, it's all going to be taken care of. And, uh, and that's it. I get it back. And then um, I have, uh, it's a fresh start. The guy, as he said, wants me to fall in love with the coach again. I go, you can try. I'm going to give you the opportunity to have me fall in love with the coach again. And then if it falls apart again, then I need to take a, the next step. All right. Then I need to take the next step. Translation, contact a consumer lawyer. About this pile of shit. All right, I have an update for you. 
Do you guys remember the story of the couple in Georgia? It's completely fucked. 63-year-old Cheryl McGregor. Who's got a face that makes fucking Ted Lindsay's look young. She got married to uh, Karan McCain. 26. They have a real social media presence. I think we actually played the video of them announcing that they were pregnant. I think I've, I've kind of tried to um, ban it from my brain. Before I get to that, Corey says, we need a show lawyer that we can call in, who can call in for these issues. I actually have a show lawyer. His name is Ross. And uh, he's a trial lawyer. So he's the type of guy that, you know, um, let's say you're on a motorcycle and you get run over. He's going to be the guy that goes and gets your money for you. Uh, Jeremy says, I couldn't imagine all of these issues while also dealing with the DPF issues he'd have. I don't think I know what a DPF issue is. All right. Anyway. Ross is in Kelly Cheese's ex. Yes. Here's the video and the audio of when these two announced that they were pregnant. Now, she's 63. She's got 17 grandkids of her own. And she dresses like she's, you know, 28. The ripped jeans. By the way, her foot there. I have finally found a foot that I think is disgusting. This is the video of these two announcing that she's having a baby. So we're back with another Hold update. And... Fucking shit up again. I'm such an asshole. We got pictures of our baby and that it's starting to develop now. So it looks like a baby now. Oh. And it is so adorable. Look at her face. Look at that. She managed to get pregnant. These gnarled up fingers are all fucked up. And the best part is our baby's formula is healthy. It doesn't have Down syndrome. We found out the fraternity test. Not fraternity. But, uh, found out the fraternity test? Wait, what? Gender next week. Okay. He's talking. I, I see what he's saying. And it's pretty amazing. Like, I'm God damn. ready. Uh, Y'all just don't know. She's so, fixing to be in her second trimester. So we made it past that big milestone of risk and all that. So y'all will be seeing our surrogate soon. And another update we're having, um, our first tour date is going to be in Biloxi, tour Mississippi, date. July 13th. 13th, yes. And we will be there. So we're just letting you know. They're on tour? What what goes on on this tour? Do people just like throw fruit at them or something? If you're in Biloxi, Mississippi or around the surrounding areas and you want to see us, our first date is July 13th and we will be in Biloxi, Mississippi. What what losers want to see these people? We help you see. And what 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 do they do once you get there? Call y'all soon. Hello. Oh, so gross. You know, it'd be one thing if she was 63 and was attractive. Even that is remarkably weird. I, I Age gaps freak me out. I just, it just, you know, get on my nerves. I, I, I cannot imagine it. This is the video the other day with these, the same couple 
doing their gender reveal. Uh, I will say when she, like from a distance, she looks reasonably normal, but until you get all, like to her face, she's got that fucking crip keep, uh, crip keeper face. Two. I can't talk today. So sick. Oh, look at those gnarled legs. So fucked up. We need Trump to intervene. She has a face that <laughs> makes a freight train take a dirt road. Chris writes, why couldn't this be one of those gender reveals that goes horribly wrong? Tyler adds, that pink smoke in the gender reveal resembles the dust that spews out of her vag. <laughs> yeah, one of those gender reveals that goes horribly wrong. You're right. Like maybe they, uh, they like pull that popper there and... Somehow there was a mistake at the factory and it's uh, loaded with uh, nitroglycerin. And it just explodes in her face. She's going to be almost 80 at the kids' high school graduation. I'm really liking the line, she has a face that makes a freight train take a dirt road. Rich says, dude is fulfilling his banging grandma fantasy. That's a bad fantasy. Maureen says, she's my age, for God's sake. Yeah, and that's giving normal, normal looking ladies of your age a bad name. Okay? This woman is disgusting in many, many ways. Chris in Buffalo suggests this is like Maureen and Kevin Kuyper's being together. Oh my God. You guys are missing a great opportunity. I take it back. No, you're not. Maureen's married, ding dong, to Larry. If she were single, Kuyper's would be all up in that business. <laughs> Corey adds, that kid is going to have autism out the ass and have a huge head. Rich adds, the tour they're going on is like a donkey show. You know, you're right. If they announced that they were coming here, you better fucking believe I'm going. I would go to that more than like anything else. If like the Foo Fighters were in town and someone said, hey, easy, I got tickets to the Foo Fighters. And someone else says, hey, I got tickets to go see these fuckers. I'm going to go see those fuckers. Uh, Tofus says it's child abuse. And then Maureen says she has a surrogate. No, does she? I think she does. I think we talked about this. I remember this discussion happening. I think she would be showing for sure. Are Cheryl and Curran using a, uh, Curran using a surrogate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This same exact thing happened the last time we talked about these people. But even that, 
I mean, if she were actually pregnant, okay, that would be the less important detail of the story. The most important detail of this story is how ugly this chick is and the age gap. Those are the, I know it sounds cruel, but it's true. She looks like a pile of fucking shit. Um, and the child can still, as Corey said, have, was it Corey who said that? Have autism out the ass. The fact that her old ass egg is with this guy's potent jizz. It might make a super powered child, frankly. We don't know. But getting back to my point, uh, Trump needs to, when he wins, uh, executive order that they have to abort. I think that's uh, the first thing that has to happen. It's not going to be pardon himself. That's going to be the second thing he does. First thing he has to do is he has to sit down at that goddamn desk with all those stupid pens and like to one side will be Kid Rock and the other side will be guy who sings God Bless the USA and everybody's got fucking cowboy hats on and shit. And uh, he needs to write in that book kill this baby and then hold it up over his head. That's what he needs to do. God damn. Jeremy says forced abortion for gypsy Rose Blanchard too. Exactly. We can't have that crazy bitch having a baby. Yeah, the Eric St. Joe podcast. Hey, today we're talking forced abortion. Corey says, Free Beer has said he feels weird being the old parent at all the school meetings. Imagine this lady. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Speaking of um, politics, there's a dude in Grand Rapids. He's in the House of Representatives. He's a Democrat, and uh, he's in Congress. And he's the latest one. He's right right here. He's right in the next town to come out and say, we got to pass the torch. Biden has to step down. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think, but not really. Because if he happens to win, and I don't think he will, but if he were to win, he's eventually going to resign and it's going to be Kamala Harris. And if it, if he decides now to step down, to step down, it's going to be Kamala Harris who's going to be in his place, I presume. All right? Which I'm okay with. I'm okay with anybody as long as it's not Trump. I need to mention that from time to time. I'm in the unique spot where I can say without a doubt that Trump is going to win, but I don't want him to win. You know, there are Americans who actually think that a woman in the white house is a bad idea because of them being a woman that they don't have the sensibility to do the right thing. And I fucking hate that shit because if it weren't like for my wife having common sense, Holy shit. Would I be in trouble? I can't tell you how many times that I've said, Hey, I got to run something by you. What is it? Well, this, 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 this. What do I do? This, this, this. Hmm. Um, I think your best bet is blah, 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 blah. And I go, you think so? Yeah, do that. Okay, I'll do that. And then my life is easier. Okay? And any of you fucking morons that thinks we can't have one of the blacks and we can't have a woman in the White House, you're fucking crazy. All right. 
Corey says it would have to be Harris because her name is also on all the money that's been donated. That's exactly right. We talked about that yesterday. If they went with someone else, they would have to refund all the donations and hope that those donors would donate it again to the campaign. True. Tofa says not only is she black and a woman, she's also East Asian. All right. Dear Meathead in Moments. I'm excited about that to get my dad on here. Uh, Jimmy says Tulsi Gabbard would be a great fit. I don't know anything about her. I think she's either a, a Republican or an independent. So that that's like two big strikes uh, against her. Oh, hang on a second. I got to call Pooh Bear. She's grocery shopping right now. And uh, she just sent me a text. Hello. Hey, I'm podcasting right now. Did you know that? Oh, Sally. Well, I've called to tell you that they don't have no, what you no. need. In- no, I was just telling you so that you didn't say anything bad. Oh, gotcha. But I, I do have some things I need you to get for me. Okay. The spinach for sure. And everything. Oh, yeah, I, told you, yeah. I know all the salad stuff. Okay, good. We don't need carrots, though. Okay. We're good on carrots. Um, And for sure, uh, what, what did you just send me? You just sent me a... If you needed um, yogurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need that, please. And I also need some of those frozen berries. Okay. Got it. All right. Thank you. Okay. All righty. We'll see you soon. All right. I love you. Love you too. Bye. Bye-bye. Pooh Bear. Chris says, quote, I was just calling to tell you that they don't have any boner pills. I can get a boner. That is not the problem. I've made that very clear. I can get an erection. Mason Blue adds, Zane needs yogurt to throw on your face. Um, what the fuck? Where was I going? What was I talking about? All right, that wraps up Act 1 of the Eric Zane Show free podcast. Act 2 is available, same place you got Act 1. Just click on it and enjoy. It picks up right where this one finishes. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.